Hello and welcome. I'm John with the Fossil Channel and today I'm going to be going over my EDC bag. I have an old video on my channel here where I showed the contents of the bag a few years ago. I thought I'd go through it again and just talk about what I have in there and the kind of updates I've done with it throughout the years. On the front here I have uh, some S Biner type clips where I can clip things on and off pretty easily. So I have the uh, light here, it's a triple A little light just to access quickly in case I can't get into my bag for whatever reason. And there's two modes here and it's powered by a rechargeable nickel metal hydride triple A battery. It's also IPX7 waterproof so it can withstand wetness and rain and whatnot. I usually take this bag out into work, uh, sometimes when I'm hiking, sometimes when I just go to a friend's house. Uh, I keep a variety of different things in here. Um, this is what I call my EDC bag, which stands for Everyday Carry. And we're, we're going to look at what's on the outside first. So on the outside, I have a refillable container, which is a miniature spray bottle. And in that spray bottle, I put alcohol and soap and water sometimes, so I do have a little bit left in here. Sometimes the alcohol tends to uh, dissipate pretty quickly, but that's okay. This is a refillable unit, and it's designed to be a modular piece of the equipment here. Uh, the second item I have in here is a Pilot G2 pen, because every single time I look, look for a pen, I never seem to have one on me but I know one's in the kit if I need it. And this is uh, an older pen. I just, you know, you can stick anything in the little sleeve here. What I like about this uh, Maxpedition EDC bag, it's the uh, fatty version, meaning it's eight inches by six inches and about two to three thickness, although it does expand, as you can see here, it's pretty thick. It's almost about five inches on the expansion. Uh, I tend to pack my EDC bags pretty thick. Uh, I designed this one to be a modular piece of equipment, so that's why it's pretty thick and big. And then further in here is the medical pouch here. I don't want to take it all the way out, but it's got band-aids and other sorts of uh, little boo-boo uh, items, antiseptic wipes, uh, things of that nature. So it's easily accessible in the front pouch, so I don't have to go digging into my pack. On the rear of the unit, there's a Molly Pals uh, type webbing where you can lash stuff to it if you want. Right now I got it packed so tight that it's kind of hard to really put anything through the loops here. Um, that's okay because it's that's the way I have it configured for my usage. Um, you could probably configure it differently for your usage. And then on the back I have a S binder, a bigger one, a side locking one, so I can hook this to a bag or anything else if I need to carry it without using my hands. Uh, the unit itself, what's in here, the total weight of this is about, I want to say about eight pounds. So it's very heavy, uh, but it contains almost everything that I usually use when I'm outdoors or at work. So let's open it up. I like to keep it zipped up in the top here. It's a pretty big bag, lots of stuff inside. And as you can see, uh, quite a few items in here. Um, so I, I guess I'll start out with the uh, little Kip K solar panel kit that I built. Uh, it's a AA USB output charger, uh, 500 milliwatts on the USB out. Uh, as you can see, it's not the best handy job I've done, but it works well and it fits in an Altoids can. And this is a 3.7 volt, uh, I think 150 milliamp to 200 milliamp solar panel. Uh, maybe a little bit less than that looking at it right now. I don't remember the exact mill wattage that you get in the sun with this, but it does do a trickle charge to uh, nickel metal hydride batteries, although there is no voltage regulator in there. So you want to be careful um, if you build one of these kits, you don't overcharge your battery. I do have a uh, diode uh, uh, in here so that it does not, uh, the, the solar panel does not drain the batteries, luckily. So this is my little solar charging kit for double A's in the pack. I used to have a bigger uh, solar charger that didn't work as well. So I replaced that with this and 
I use a AA battery charging system with my EDC bag here. So that is the uh, Altoids Can Kip K solar charging kit. You can build these with parts from eBay pretty cheaply. I think this was like, the kit itself was like 17 bucks at the time when I bought it a few years back. And you can build these for a lot less. So just a little something I have in here. Put that to the side. And starting at the top over here, uh, I have a bag full of different items. Uh, various cables that I use when I'm out in the trail or at work. Um, I have a little adapter here. It's a uh, mini USB to uh, lightning adapter, I guess, for Apple phones. I usually come across my friends who have Apple phones and they want to charge with my uh, mini USB cable, but I don't have the adapter uh, except for in this case, and I'll bring it out and I'll be able to charge their phones via this adapter here. I think this is like a few cents on eBay. You can find them on eBay relatively inexpensively. So that's what I have here, and this is the cable. It's an anchor cable, so it's a, it's a high-duty, um, high-amperage cable. I believe it's over 2 amps for charging current. And then here I have a lithium-ion nickel metahydride battery charger uh, by Olight. This is a magnetic USB one. So what you would do, you, you would take one end, put it on the battery, and take the other and put it on the other end. It doesn't matter which polarity, because this is polarity neutral, which is kind of nice. And over here, it, it goes through a little charging conduit cable here. And this is a smart charger, this little circuitry in this little box here. And it charges at approximately uh, 750 milliamps, uh, approximately, uh, at a 5 volt input here. So you can either charge your um, lithium ions like your 18650s or uh, batteries up to a D sized nickel metal hydride battery. I've charged both with this uh, little USB charger. It comes with a little USB cap on there. So this is about like $10 on eBay. A very good buy, very lightweight. If you're looking to save money and um, weight if you're backpacking, this would be a, a good little piece of kit to use. And that's why I keep it with my kit here. Further in the bag here, uh, I decided to update it with a 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo cable here because I sometimes come in, I, I, dri I ride in different cars with my friends and um, I'll have my uh, my phone with me and I can plug in directly aux into various different electronic devices with it and play music or whatnot. So that's why I have this cable in here. It's not a survival thing, although I could use it as a cordage piece if I really wanted to for a lightweight duty, but um, it's just basically there for uh, patching in and playing my music through different various sound systems. So that's why it's in the, the kit here. I spent a dollar at that at the dollar store, so it's relatively inexpensive. I have about $5 in, in money here, so I'd use this for as a backup emergency source. Uh, I didn't want to put too much money in the kit in case I got robbed or whatnot, but I figure cash is always a good thing to have on you. Even if it's not a whole lot, it's still something. So that's what I have in the bag there. And then here I have a little USB to DC input charge cable. Now what I use this for is I have a Yaesu VX1R, and this cable will charge that Yaesu VX1R. Uh, it used to be in this kit here in the older video. You might have seen it in the video there but I've upgraded the ham radio that comes in the kit here. This I carry it because sometimes I carry the One X VX1R and I like to charge it and I don't have the charging cable necessarily. So I go and grab this from my EDC bag and that's what I charge it with. I got this off of eBay for about a dollar from China. So it's pretty inexpensive, um, but that's the cable I have there. And uh, further into the bag, I have a BNC to SO239 connector. Um, so it's designed to connect with the PL259 connector. I have um, my ham radio in the, in the back here and I have the adapters which change its SMA connector to a BNC and then from the BNC I hook this up and I can use SO239 to a PL259 connector or, or external antenna and uh, it makes it that much easier to interface and I usually sometimes when I'm out in the field doing ham radio operations I'll be looking for a connector and I could just get one from this bag here. So that's why I have this connector in the bag. Let's see what else, what are the goodies I have in here? It's been a while since I've gone through this. Uh, I have a USB-C adapter from Mini USB. 
because uh, I don't have any USB-C charging devices right now. Uh, but this is a little adapter. You plug in the uh, little uh, mini USB plug here, and it'll give you USB-C conversion. So that is a little adapter here. I'll put that back on the side. And then in here, I just have a receipt for one of my things. I, I use this as paper to burn in case of an emergency. And then I have a Ziploc, well, a Ziploc wannabe brand bag in here. It's just a way to keep my things organized in there. Um, and then I have a handkerchief is the last thing in here with a wrapping of, uh, I believe I have some hairpins and some uh, P, uh, I forget what the P51 and P31. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers on these, but these are can openers. The P re uh, numbers ref uh, refer to the amount of revolutions or turns you have to make to open a can. So obviously the bigger one you have less or less to make and then this one you have to make more turns, but uh, can openers, great for cutting things too in general, but uh, I just use these for opening cans if I have to. And I have two just in case one breaks. And some hairpins here which come in handy for a variety of different things. So that is my little kit and then the handkerchief obviously, it's a little $3 cotton handkerchief which comes in handy for a variety of different things so that is what's in the first top bag and uh, I do have a lot of stuff to go through so just bear in mind here it's been a while since I opened the kit and used all the stuff I only use some of the stuff frequently and then the other stuff is there for me in case I need it in the front you can see there's a Bic lighter which I do use and then I have a Lumen Top Tool TI uh, AAA light uh, I've done a review on this on my channel earlier and uh, it's a relatively neutral um, tint uh, LED light, which is nice. Uh, it's charged with a AAA battery. It lasts a pretty long time on low, so it's got three different modes with it. And I use it for just seeing things, and it's an easily accessible light. Uh, the next item I have in here, I switched out uh, an old uh, turn-style mechanical pencil. And uh, this is a another mechanical pencil which you click in and the, the lead comes out and I kind of think I just reset it here there it is so and it's got a little eraser on top here a little twist one uh, it's a 0.5 millimeter lead uh, HB2 uh, I do drawing and sometimes when I want to sketch uh, I'll go for my mechanical pencil I like sketching with mechanical pencils and that's why I have this specific tool with the set here so I use this It's made by Pentel um, I can't find this model anymore. I think they might sell it online somewhere, but uh, it's a nice little pencil. I've done many drawings with this, so I just have this in my kit here. It's a little thick, but uh, it works. Going down the list here, I have a little bit uh, like a mini scissor, sheer kind of scissor in case I have to cut things. I just keep this uh, in case I have to cut through clothing or other things, band-aids, whatever, um, materials, paper, you name it. Just a, a all kind of use uh, scissor. And then over here, I have a little um, driver set, which contains different bits for uh, screwdriver lengths and hex keys and whatnot. Um, I used to have a, uh, I have a little bit more in here. They're kind of stuck in there, but uh, you get the idea, though. You take one out, and you cap this, and you, it's just a little redundancy, so I can uh, undo screws and whatnot. So it's pretty straightforward. It's a multi-bit screwdriver and uh, so I keep that in there I use it from time to time uh, going down the list here I have a sharpie marker uh, fine point uh, archival proof uh, this is a basic sharpie most guys are going to have in their kit just for marking items and identifying things and would uh, for communications if you got to write a note down real quick somewhere um, it's pretty good to have one of these very useful I find I do end up using that quite a lot uh, so that is the Sharpie there. Just kind of reorganizing the kit here while I'm going through it with, for you guys. And we have in the last part of the top section here on the left side is a M&P Smith & Wesson uh, laser AAA light tactical pen. Uh, now I did a review on this uh, on my YouTube channel about a year ago and this is an, a decent tool um, it's a AAA light, so it's a redundancy with this one here. We use this one AAA, 
or uh, you can see there it's a little laser which I do use for marking and sometimes if I'm pointing for, on things on a map or doing a presentation I'll use the laser in here it does come in handy uh, if I have somebody with search and rescue and they have an IR or infrared or night vision scope they can see the laser beam uh, at a good distance so I can use that for signaling um, it's a twist engaging pen here it costs about $28 uh, it has refillable uh, ink so that you can refill the uh, cartridges in here and writes pretty good and it's pretty functional um, I like using it I have used it I just need something a little bit more robust I had a basic uh, While well, you saw the pen in the front, that can break easily. This, uh, not so much, so I have a little bit of redundancy, and it's another tool, uh, multi-use tool, which can come in handy. So that's why I have it in the kit here, and I just like carrying it there. Uh, I'm going to dig into the side here before we go into this back side. So on, on the bottom side here, everything's kind of like jammed in here, which is not the best way to do EDC kit, but it works for my uses. This is a little shot, guy, shot, uh, shot glass cup, um, stainless steel. I used to have another version of this in the kit. Uh, you might have seen it on the video. Uh, it's got thinner steel. This one's a little bit thicker, and uh, I can boil water with this if I really um, take my time about it, and I can purify water, which is nice. Uh, so in a survival situation, uh, I want to make sure I always have some kind of way of being able to drink water or get water that's or make water drinkable for myself and this is one of the items that helps me do that not to mention if I just need a cup for drinking anyway uh, you know you could just drink whatever out of it so it's relatively uh, small and compact it is a little bit heavy but that's all right um, it works fine its purpose uh, is to purify water mainly and contain water so it's pretty useful I got this from uh, Yosemite in California a few years back and uh, cost me about I think eleven dollars I got it from the Ansel Adams uh, gallery of all places in Yosemite so he was a artist photographer who uh, photographed Yosemite so that's my cup going down the list I have about a foot about a foot or two feet of paracord just 550 Nothing special, just white paracord. You never know when you need cordage to use certain things with or lash things onto. It just cordage is just handy in general, so I keep that in the bag here. Um, moving along, we have a Colgate toothpaste. Uh, this is fluoride toothpaste, so it doesn't have all that um, silt in it for you know grinding stuff out. It's just fluoride toothpaste. I, I some, when I go over people's houses and I don't have my toothbrush. I wind up staying the night and I had this kit with me um, I have a toothbrush in here which I'll show you later uh, and I have my own toothpaste so I can just brush my own teeth keep my hygiene clean clean and you know maintaining hygiene is an important thing in a uh, survival situation I feel and that's why I have this uh, toothpaste in here so not much else to say about it just toothpaste uh, over here we have a platypus this is a 0.5 liter one and uh, I keep this as sort of like a water storage device in the unit. Um, I do have a uh, two liter dry sack, which I could use for collecting water as well, but this is my main um, water pouch, if you will. So once I purify water or have water that's drinkable, it will go into this bottle here. And uh, this stuff is pretty resilient. I've used the Platypus brand for years and they make decent stuff. I've never had issues with them leaking or breaking. Um, I have heard some things about them leaking, breaking, but uh, in my experience I've never had that problem and that's why I have this in the kit here. Further in we have a little Leatherman Micro. Uh, this is a multi-tool, a small one, and uh, I like keeping this in here because it has another redundancy with the pair of scissors, it has tweezers, it has a little, um, you know, Small things, a little mini can opener, a uh, bottle opener rather, a uh, small flathead screwdriver, um, a punch really, and then you have a fill for the Phillips head screwdriver right here, and I have, you know, other stuff like a little file, mini file here with a little uh, pilot hole driller, 
another flathead screwdriver, and uh, the classic knife. So it's a little mini multi-tool in here, which I like. It's small, it's lightweight. Um, most EDC bags are not going to have too much redundancy, and this works for what I use it for. Again, my setup may not be the best for you. Uh, you have to plan accordingly and make sure that you know your kit fits your needs. Uh, this fits my needs because I do use this sometimes, uh, as opposed to wielding a big, huge uh, Leatherman knife. I'll just grab this instead. It's just easier to use, and it's a backup unit too as well. So that is the first multi-tool in the kit. Uh, over on the corner here, I have a portable aqua, which is a water purifier. It's germicidal tablets, and I use this uh, in case of emergency, if I need to purify water and I can't boil it, or if I'm in a stealth situation. Uh, I'll keep this uh, from. I'll keep this on hand. So, active ingredient is tetraglycine hydroperot. Per, I can't even pronounce that, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's it's very usable and very reliable, in conjunction with uh, the filtration systems that I have with this uh, kit here. So that is my uh, water purification system in the corner there. On top here is a unit that I've reviewed and gone over with my Yacy VX7R uh, video. This is a USB uh, to 5 volt to 12 volt uh, converter, which I use to charge my ham radio with uh, via USB power supply. So this allows me to recharge my lithium ion batteries and transmit at a more, uh, at a higher wattage uh, enabling to me to get out further with my radio, which is in this kit here, and this makes sense to have on hand, um, especially when I combine it with, say, something like the solar USB charger here. Uh, I can use my double A's as a bank, convert it to 5 volt and 5 volt to 12 volt. Um, it's not the most efficient way of charging something, but it will work in a pinch, and it has worked in the pinch. Even if I have this charging and the batteries in the bank, it'll it'll still work. Uh, also the same thing with, uh, let's go back to the Olight USB charger. This will work just off the solar panel in here, so I can still charge at least a single AA efficiently if I need to. So that is the uh, little uh, tangent there with the uh, charger here, the USB charger. So everything's based off of USB charging or a AA sort of modular adaptability in this kit, and that's why I tend to run a lot of things that run on AA. On the top right here, I have a, <laughs> not many guys think of this, but I have a salt and pepper shaker. Uh, I like my salt and pepper. Um, I like to have my food spiced up a bit, and I feel like this could be uh, something that comes in handy when uh, you're out in the trail, and you know, if it ever came to it, I'd like to have a little bit of fun, uh, so to speak, in terms of, uh, morale a little morale boost to have some flavoring on your food um, sometimes when i uh, go out and I, I forget to get salt on my food i'll open up the this case here and i'll just open this up and i will have a, uh, a salt shaker which just comes in handy for me so that's why i have that in there uh, on the side here uh, in the corner i'll try to get that out i'll get that out later i'm going to go through other stuff i guess i have some uh, backcountry balm uh, lip balm so you can use this for uh, all sorts of different things. You can use it as lubricant. Uh, you can use it as sort of a, a way to keep your uh, wounds from getting infected in certain uh, cases. So it's a multi-use item. Just I use it for as chapstick, really. That's really come, what it comes down to uh, in general use. So I have that in the kit in case I need it. Uh, moving along, I have uh, I'll go over that in a little bit. I have a multi-tool, another one that's like a little fork, uh, CRKT Eaton tool. It has a bunch of different uh, hexagonal uh, type of uh, uh, different size ones, so you can uh, play around with different screws or uh, nuts or bolts or whatever to uh, get it to work. You have a little uh, inside here, you can you know put things in there and pry it up. You have a little bit of a prying bar on the side here. And obviously the spoon and the spork part in the front here. I have used this on occasion. Uh, it does come in handy uh, from time to time, especially the spoon part. If you want to uh, test out certain things, it's great. It's stainless steel, so it's heavy, but 
very useful. Again, it's another multi-tool that works in my kit here. So if I'm going out and, uh, <laughs> you know, not that most places would never have um, things to eat with, but I have like a mini utensil thing going on here. And, uh, you know, I could use this as a little plate and my cup and my little spork. You know, it's just things that would work very well uh, for me and what I do. Um, so that's a little multi-tool there, very useful. Uh, over here we have the classic uh, matches and cotton in a uh, waterproof tube here, uh, a vial, if you will. So that's pretty handy to have in case it's an emergency you need to start a fire and you got nothing to start a fire with, or if something's wet, for example. Uh, we all know how long it takes to start burning wet things, so it's in here and it's in a relatively weatherproof, uh, I don't want to say fully waterproof vial, but it appears to be waterproof anyway. I'll call it weatherproof for now to be safe and uh, keeps this relatively dry and that's my backup source of fire. Now on the side here, uh, I have my sewing kit, which uh, I, have an, I had an old lead pencil holder. Uh, it's one of those thin little tube things. I wrapped duct tape around here because duct tape is extremely useful as well. And I have a very thin uh, a spool of uh, black uh, sewing thread, which I can use to repair clothing or sew wounds with. And then you take off the cap and I have a bunch of uh, needles inside here. I don't want to take them out, but uh, you know, you just have to take my word for it that they're, that that's my little mini sewing kit there. And uh, it works pretty well. I've used it before. Uh, over here on the side, I have uh, what we have is called super glue. This is still uh, functional. Uh, every so often I'll replace this because sometimes it'll get dried up or the entrance will get dried up and then I'll have to use a sewing needle to poke a hole through the uh, top to get through the glue or uh, I might just discard this fully. Uh, this is uh, pretty useful for closing wounds and other things like that. It's, it's super glue. I mean, you want to bind stuff obviously with it. You can. It dries pretty fast. So I have that in the kit. And then moving along, I have a... Uh, double-A battery holder with one end loop battery inside. So this is a backup battery uh, for the AAA lights in case I need an extra one, I have it here. And it does come in handy and I can also uh, charge this as well. And this fits in a double-A form factor, uh, or very close to it anyway. So that's why I have it in the uh, case here. Uh, let's see what else I have here. Okay, we're gonna go into the center spine area where we have a uh, Cheap Chinese knockoff, uh, full tang blade. I do like my full tang blades. And this one's decently sharp. Uh, it's not too bad. It's, it takes the place of my remora, my Becker Necker knife. And I, I wear one around my neck and I like to keep a back one in the uh, bag here. So I can use this for processing wood if I want to. It's got a good purchase on it. It's a decent size blade. Um, it's better than you know, trying to pot, pry with a Leatherman uh, knife, uh, you'll wind up breaking the knife on these uh, multi-tools as opposed to something like this. It has a little bit more rigidity. You can still break these uh, though, so you want to be careful if you're prying with these types of knives. Uh, but that's what I use this for. It's a, you know, one full tang blade. And then here I have a Leatherman Wave. Uh, it's the first generation with a Leatherman Wave. So it's so another multi-tool. It's a bigger cousin than the micro in here, and it serves a different function in here. Uh, you notice the needle nose pliers, the, uh, the internal grips here, and the wire cutter here, which is very handy. And then it has a bunch of other tools which I do use, uh, namely the knife, obviously. Uh, I do have a file, which is a little bit more aggressive on one side and less on the other, more fine grain, which is very useful, and it has a file uh, type side in here with teeth. Uh, on this side, that's the knife already. We already went through that. I do have a saw-like uh, tooth uh, blade here uh, for, you know, cutting things like rope and whatnot. And then on the inside, you have the standard array of things you would find in a multi-tool. A flathead screwdriver, a little bit bigger. I have a can opener right here, Phillips head screwdriver. And then on the other side, I have, uh, you know, the punch, another type of uh, drilling flathead um, tool, and then I have a scissors right here, although this is broken, the scissors here, so uh, it's not exactly 100%, uh, but I have one lying around and decided to throw in the kit here. So that is the Leatherman Wave that I have right now. So that's the multi-tool of the kit. 
Uh, further in the spine, I have some nail clippers because uh, when I'm out in the field, sometimes I forget to bring my nail clippers, and this is a very practical item to have. Uh, I do use it, and you know, the typical nail clipper with a little file and a little digger there. Uh, so that's what I use in the kit here. Not much to explain about that one. And then here is my toothbrush, my little travel one. You buy these at the dollar store or in CBS, they cost a little bit more. Uh, you know, basic toothbrush. I use it for on a mountain about. And then uh, going further into the bag here, I have a pair of ear plugs. I have noticed on some occasions where uh, it is advantageous to have ear plugs in case you encounter loud noises or sounds. Um, it's a good idea just to have some in, in case you need them. And I do run into some situations where I do require that. Um, so that is my earplugs. And then on the side here, I have some more items. Uh, this is one of the special tools in my kit. This is a Zebralite H52 multi-functional uh, light. And by multifunctional, uh, this is a AA battery light. And it is also a 14500 battery light. So this has multiple different modes, which go down to moonlight mode. So it's a very efficient light. Uh, and it has different modes like strobe and beacon. Uh, and it can use 14,500 batteries inside the tube here. So it's a multi-powered uh, system. And here's the headband for it. So I do have a headlight with the kit, and this is that headlight. Uh, very useful and functional. And then I have a little cloth here on the side. This is for, obviously, wiping down surfaces like glasses and lenses and whatnot, just so it doesn't get scratched. I have that in here. And I do find that I'd use that sometimes to clear my lenses. On the side here, I have a ferrite rod, although you can't really see it in here. Uh, you can kind of see the head here and the rod piece here. And then you have the uh, striker right here to strike the uh, ferrite out. So I keep one wrapped up in plastic uh, in case I need to use it and kind of keep it safe from the water, even though it will work if it's wet. So I have that as another fire starting utility in the EDC kit here. On the side here, very close to the uh, zipper, I have two Fresno uh, magnifying glasses, uh, lenses, and uh, these also double as rulers. I picked these up at a uh, fair for free. They were giving them out and uh, I said, oh, that could be useful. So I threw them in the uh, EDC bag here and I use them as a ruler. A flexible ruler. So I have two Fresno magnifying glasses there. And then over here I have a two liter dry sack pad by Sierra Summit, which does come in handy if I want to pit this, pit any items I want to keep uh, weatherproofed. I'll put it into the bag here. Or if I want to carry a significant amount of water to be cleansed or hold on to, I could use this bag as as an item for that. There's so plenty of different uses. I can stuff this with a bunch of soft cloth if I want to and use it as a pillow, um, a wrap, an emergency if I have some problems with, I could wrap like a broken bone or something in here. Uh, there's many different kinds of uses for something like this and uh, that's why I have the uh, bag in the case here. Moving along in the back here, um, I have several different other items. I have a Frontier emergency filter kit, which you can drink through the straw here. Uh, very useful. Uh, in case I can't boil water and I need to get water quickly, I can do that. And then I also have the uh, uh, a clear vial here for containing any type, type of fluid or anything that I need to stay dry. I can use this vial here. So that is my filter filtration system. And then further in, I have a uh, SOL uh, Survival Outdoors Scout Kit, and I'm not going to open this up because, it, frankly, it's kind of a pain in the ass to put back together, to put back together uh, once I do open it up, but uh, I do have uh, another smaller, thin um, multi-tool in there. I have a Bic lighter. Uh, it comes with a signaling mirror. It has uh, about three foot of duck roll wrapped in a little tube and it has some fire starters with it. It has a mylar blanket, which you can see on the top here. Um, I also put a mini Bic lighter. I'll show my other kit. I, I brought another one just to show you out of my uh, medical pack. 
um, it's configured like this. I have the big lighter here, you can see. And uh, this comes with a little compass in it and uh, a few other items which you can use out in the wilderness. So I, I keep these kits. Uh, I always recommend these to anybody. Um, these are good uh, survival scout kits is what they're called. I picked them up for about 15 bucks one year on sale. And they come pre filled with a bunch of useful items like I mentioned before and I decided to augment the kit with that here so I have one of these in the bag and that's what I use it for so that is my SOL survival scout kit further in the bag I still got more stuff in here um, I have an extra Ziploc bag which I use uh, as a backup one and here is my toilet paper uh, obviously this can be used for uh, a variety of different things um, starting fires mainly, and, well, the obvious, uh, and then further in the bag here, I believe I have one more, ah, yes, I have another Fresno lens, which I kind of just forgot to take out, to be honest, but it's another redundancy there, and it works. Um, I used to have a thicker magnifying glass in the kit, but I felt with all the fires starting, uh, you know, I think I have about five or six different ways of starting fire. I think that's way too much in some cases but for me it's perfectly fine um, so that's what I have in the, the rear pouch here in this little zipper compartment in the back uh, aside from the main compartment here uh, so that's how I have my kit set up uh, for that side of the EDC bag I'm just gonna go ahead and put some stuff back here and this will take me some time to fit it all back together nice and neatly but you can get an idea with how the kit gets organized here and why it's so big it has literally everything that i need and want uh, to enjoy my time with so we got over the top part here uh, we're going to go over the what's inside the, the rear here and what we have here is a yesu vx7r ham radio now if you see my video on the yesu vx7r you'll know why i have this radio but I'm not going to go through the whole entire radio, uh, but I'll just briefly mention what it does and why I have it. So as I said before, I have a SMA to BNC connector on this radio. These radios come by default with an SMA connector. And I have a monoband antenna here, which connects via SMA. Uh, it's a no-brand antenna, so it's not too... Uh, I'm not too worried about losing or breaking it, and that's why it's in the kit, because it's uh, useful here. This is coming apart, this rubber here, so I'll have to fix that later, but uh, it does work very well. I've used this radio for many years. Um, on the back of it, I keep the battery compartment empty, because I don't want any batteries leaking in the compartment, for one thing. Uh, number two, this is a AA battery kit, which uh, works in tandem with my charging, my solo charger again, the uh, Kip K, um charger here you'll notice there's a theme going on with double a um, batteries that I use uh, especially with my headlight as well I keep a double a battery in here so everything runs off of double a's or can run off double a's here uh, I usually keep this together and this is the uh, quad band radio meaning it operates on four different bands it can transmit on four different bands although the antenna will only allow me to effectively transmit on two meters which is one of the bands it operates on. It's two meters, six meters, 1.25 meters, and 70 centimeters. Uh, this has a wide band receive. Uh, I believe it's from 550 kilohertz to 990 megahertz, approximately, 99 megahertz. I'm not sure on the very top end, but it's in the 900 megahertz, megahertz range. So you get a wide band reception. You can receive weather with this radio. You can receive police, fire, uh, auxiliary military, Aircraft, AM, FM broadcast, short wave, um, marine channels, UHF channels, uh, business bands, you name it. This radio will receive all of those. And it's a good tool uh, that I use every day. Uh, I have an extra one to carry in my belt every day. It's a silver one. And I use that almost every day to listen to the weather or hear what's going on in the uh, repeater system here. So I have one in my EDC bag in case I forget my radio and I need to use a radio. It's right here. Uh, it's a good idea to have a ham radio in your EDC bag in case you need to call home or monitor what's going on. And this also acts as a scanner too. It has a scanner function, although it's not a um, 
not strictly a scanner, it's a transceiver. So um, it does have some nice monitoring functions with it, which will allow you to uh, figure out what's going on around you, which is valuable in a sort of bug out situation, if you want to call it that. Uh, further in, I have a Uncle Bill's tweezer with a S binder lock here. And uh, it's just, you know, a more a different type of tweezer system, easily accessible instead of having to go through um, so many other things to access tweezers. Uh, the quickest one I can access is either the one on here, and sometimes this is not a strong enough tweezer system. I'll go with these. So you get a, a variety of different tools. And I try to live by the... Uh, I try to live by the uh, saying that one is none and two is one uh, mentality. Uh, although it's not always uh, appropriate when it comes to weight considerations. And obviously my kit has a, a lot of redundancies in it. Uh, further into the pouch, I have a credit card with duct tape wrapped around it. Uh, and this is pretty straightforward. Uh, it gives me a platform to wrap uh, duct tape around and I can use this for emergency situations. So straightforward, a good piece of kit to have or a good thing to have in your kit. Uh, further in, I have the lithium ion 7.4-volt, uh, 1300 milliamp battery for the Yaesu VX7R. Uh, these batteries have a liner in them, even the AA one over on the side here. On the back, it has a rubber, rubberized liner, which gives this radio a uh, IPX rating of 7, um, IPX7 rating. So this is fully submersible. So this is the lithium ion battery, uh, which I can charge via that... Uh, DC adapter here uh, from a USB source and this will allow me to transmit out at a full 5 watts or close to 5 watts anyway on 2 meters 70 centimeters is maybe like 4 watts and then I believe at 1.25 meters this only is allowed to do 300 milliwatts or I believe it was 200 it's one of those uh, small amounts and then 6 meters I think it's somewhere in the range of like 2 watts transmission power um, I'm not exactly sure on the six meter part of this so uh, you have to look that up later but this is the battery for the VX7R and then further in here I have my AA batteries I have a pair of end loop batteries here and they are the 1900 milliamp ones yes they are 1900 milliamps so these guys are pretty useful they go into my ham radio or my light or uh, into the charger the USB charger here which I can pop them in here, and then I have a USB charging bank via USB here. So that's how this kit works. Anything else in here? Nope. That is pretty much the whole entire uh, kit taken apart. Um, that's my EDC bag that I take with me and use at work and on the trails. And like I said, this EDC bag is not for everybody. Uh, it, it works for my usage. Uh, it may not work for yours. Obviously, there's a lot of things in here that are, could be considered very redundant. I agree with that. Um, but for my needs, they work very well. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of what to use for your EDC bag. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm John with the Fossil Channel, and I'll see you later.